when you talk to women and they find it attractive when their significant other has their group of friends and they have sort of their own activities. In this podcast episode, I'm lucky enough to be joined by author, speaker and life coach, Shari Lead. Amongst other things, we'll be talking about the importance of maintaining and looking after your friendships, especially when you're a parent. Dad Mind Matters, helping men to safely navigate family life without losing their minds. Lived experience podcasts about mental health, parenting and marriage on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday. It is different for men than women going out and making friends. And I, knowing that I was going to talk to you today, I started ta- asking my male friends, hey, tell me about your friendships. Are you making friends? Do you think they're important? And I honestly, at first, the first gut response I got from guys, or I asked them actually, what can you learn about friendships from women? The first gut response was like, huh, nothing. <laughs> so I, I know it's very different. But as I spoke to my friends and as we got deeper into it, we realized there's this joy because I started asking follow-up questions. Do you go out with your friends and how did you meet them? And how do you feel after getting together with them? And there is a need for men to have a sense of community. It does look different than female friendships a lot of times, but there is this, this energy that comes from time with friends and making friends. And I know for women, when you talk to women and they find it attractive when their significant other has their group of friends and they have sort of their own activities. Granted, it's not going to the bar every night with that group of friends. That's not attractive. But I know women find it attractive when the man that they're involved with goes out golfing, maybe the family's still a priority, but they like that they have their own set of friends. Yeah, my wife knows full well, if I'm going a bit quiet and I've gone a bit and maybe my mental health's not great, that actually going out with my friends and I train Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and I go down there twice Mm -hmm. a week and I do this with a load of other 40 year old men and Mm -hmm. we're all hobbyists, but none of us take ourselves that seriously, but I always feel a million times better. And quite often I have to really go, I'm going to do this. And when you're a dad, you can go, I've got to stay at home and support my wife. Or I've got to help with, like, well, I think they can live without you for two hours. I think you, and then I always feel amazing. And actually, I think men can learn a lot about friendships from women. My wife has some really good friends and there is naturally a stronger sense of community. And she would get so much support from her friends. Uh, that can never be a bad thing. Sometimes it's easier for men to talk to other men about things. Certainly, there are times when you don't want to talk to your wife, not for any reason other than you're just worried that I don't want to burden her with this. And also, maybe there's an element you're like, this is probably not that attractive if I'm having to ask my wife to kind of fix me or bail me out. Or, well, whereas I think that's where men, you wouldn't have a problem opening up to a guy at work or someone down at jujitsu. That would be okay, I think. Um, yeah, and you make a good point with actually going out to do jujitsu. It takes effort. And this is one thing I think men can learn from women because women, I'm generalizing here, but I, we set up time together to go out for, to lunch together, girls night yeah. out, right? To go, go out with moms or whatever we want to call the gatherings. But there's an effort made, even celebrating each other's birthdays, things like that. And a lot of times, I know at least from my girlfriends and their husbands, they're not making that effort necessarily as we are to go out with their guy friends or to make time for them. So you make a good point. You know, if you have something like jujitsu or an activity to make that time to go do it, because it does take effort. Yeah, I mean, course. there's nothing that beats FaceTime. And I think you need to give yourself permission to do it because I think you can hide behind the role of, well, I'm, I'm a parent. It's, I've got to stay at home. I go, you do. But actually, you might be a better parent if you give yourself two or three times in the week where you're not someone's dad. Because I think a lot of men don't give themselves permission. I think they feel that, especially maybe if, like me, you're a dad who is doing the majority of the childcare, isn't the main breadwinner. Maybe you feel to an extent, am I allowed to go out? Do I deserve to go out? Have I done enough to justify going out? And I think it's a self-preservation thing. You've got to be kind enough to yourself. Go, actually... I will be a calmer, happier dad if I go out and give myself two hours of, as you said, not going out to the bar all night, but going and hanging out with some other dads and doing something we're all interested in. I'll just feel better. And then the next day, I'll just be a better husband and dad. So actually, it's an investment in their future as much as it is mine. 
Yeah. And it's so good for self-worth, right? Because it's so easy as a parent, especially when you are the primary person and you're serving the kids, yep. basically. Yep. It's so good for your own self-worth. And you feel better about yourself and you get to know yourself better where you don't have that time to do necessarily when you're doing all the day-to-day -day tasks. And that's what friendships do too. They help you understand yourself as you talk to your friends, as you see their lives, you start to understand a little bit more about your own person. Yeah, you're right. I think it's important to, because, and this is something I think all parents feel irrespective of gender, that you can feel quite invisible as a parent. You can just be, mm -hmm. I'm just someone's dad. I'm just like, you can just become that person. And then you think, well, if I used to have all these interests and I used to have all these things I wanted to do. And I think it's, you have to work hard to protect that. And I think it's really important to, to cultivate that self-worth separate from the roles as dad or, or a parent. Because when you have your self-worth, you then can um, ride the waves a little bit better. In other words, when life throws you these curveballs, yeah. if you don't feel confident in yourself separate from what your duties are, then it's really hard to wrap your head around what needs to happen or to see your opportunities. So yeah, having your self-worth, having something separate, having friendships, that's what's going to help you when you have curveballs uh, that are thrown. Yeah, it think... does, right? Life throws all sorts of curveballs. Absolutely. I think what you're doing about highlighting the importance of friendship is really invaluable because I think a lot of people would feel they get to be an adult and a parent. That's a luxury I, I don't have time for. No, you need to make time for it. It's really important for your mental health that you go out. Quite often my wife will have a party organized or something with her friends. She's like, oh, I don't want to do it. I can't. I said, no, you need to go out. Sometimes I have to, it's a lot less. I have to push her out and say, come on. Within a couple of hours, you, you sit down and you chat with someone you haven't seen for a bit, who's like-minded and it's a safe place and you can talk. It's really important. Um, and I think you're lucky if you have a partner who does that. Not everyone does, but that has to be a deal breaker. I, the, I do this for me. That's important. And that's yeah. okay. It's necessary as opposed to something that always oh, a treat. I get to go and hang out with my friends. The, you know, and relationship, partner relationships are difficult. And unfortunately, they don't all always stay together and work out. And the people who have those friendship bases, partner breakup is hard no matter what. If you're a dad and, and you end up being a single dad, it's hard no matter what. But if you made a, a practice in your daily life to have these friendships, to cultivate these friendships and make them a priority, it doesn't mean you're neglecting your family or your spouse or partner. but if something doesn't work out and you find yourself in a position of being a single dad, already having that in place really helps. I've seen friends and people I've coached where they did not have that friendship base and their only friend really was their partner. And that's a lot of pressure on your partner yeah. to be your, the only social and, the, and knowing that you're the one that has to plan everything and make sure that your partner is social. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah, I've so, seen a couple of, I know a couple of friends who've sadly, they've, they've had divorces, self-preservation. You need to have your own support network. That's really important. But I think the work you're doing is only be going to become more important and it's only going to become clearer how important it is to highlight the importance of friendship and connection. Because when you boil it all down, that's the stuff that you, that really life's about, really. Mm -hmm. It's the stuff. It's healthy. It's really healthy. It brings meaning to life in a way that when you're focused on other people's and you're in, invested in other people's lives and then you get a joy back that you can't recreate yourself. What was the first state you started in when you did your 50 states tour? Albuquerque, New Mexico. So it's a Southwest state here in the U.S. So that was my first stop. And I started meeting 50 strangers and I, I now call them 50 teachers. That's awesome. And as you, yeah, and as you open up for as practical steps, right, to make friends, because it's hard to make friends for men, I would say, number one, redefine the idea of masculinity. Take out that, that fear, that vulnerability or whatever word you want to use means less masculine. And instead, when you redefine the word, think about the leaders, think about being open, being a masculine man is somebody who's open, someone who's open to meeting people, open to sharing a little bit about themselves, to connecting. And then two, I think in addition to that, 
is doing these things. Like when I traveled all 50 states, it wasn't easy to sit down with a stranger, but I realized the more I did it in practice, the easier it became. Baby steps. If, if you're more of an introvert and it's difficult to reach out and talk to someone, even in a class like jujitsu or some activity you yeah. signed up for, baby steps. One class, say hello to someone. Next class, say hello. You know, how's the weather? You know, Whatever it no, is. No, that's a really know? good point. I think you've hit the nail on the head. Even if you change the one word of instead of saying I've got to be vulnerable, because it just be more open. Because that naturally, so I can be, I can totally be more open. I can make more of an effort when I drop the kids off and just those times when I don't keep your head down, just say, morning, how you doing? And I think that would help, that would help me to go, okay, well, just give yourself a goal of today. When there's an opportunity to say good morning to someone, just do it. Because I think a lot of people just put off and they just, I'll oh, just keep my head down, keep to myself. No, you, you're going to have to slightly be out of the comfort zone here. So that's really good advice, I think. And approach people with curiosity. I find that when you approach someone with the idea in your mind that you're curious, you're generally curious about that person. It takes away that focus on yourself and that fear of, oh, I don't know how I'm presenting. Are they going to judge me? Are they going to think I'm weird because I'm talking to them all of a sudden? Yeah. And when you start to approach people with genuine curiosity to learn something about them, it makes it a lot easier and takes the pressure off you. And it's practice, right? It's practice, practice, practice. And I have to tell you, friendship is a numbers game. Friendship is a numbers game. So the first person you talk to, maybe they blow you off, right? Yeah. It's a numbers game. And you make this a practice and a few of those friendships will stick. Yeah. Yeah. Don't make the first situation, which may be completely out of your control. If it doesn't go well, that's, it may not be anything to do with you. Maybe you just caught someone a bad time having a rubbish day. No, that's really good advice. I can't wait to read your book when it comes out. I think it's going to be brilliant. I started listening to your podcast, and as I mentioned before we went live, I enjoy it. I love the ukulele playing even so. That's kind. I'm looking forward to hearing more. I think for women, we can understand and, and um, our partners and our spouses better if we do things like listen to dad podcasts and be better partners ourselves. Actually, looking at the analytics, the podcasts that do really well, I've, I've spoken to a, a marriage and family therapist called Crystal DeSantis, who's lovely. And like you, just really interesting and nice, friendly person to talk to. Those are the ones that do the best. Even though very much my podcast is Dad Mind Matters, it is branded for dads. I think men are, men love the dynamic of a man talking to a woman and getting a woman's opinion. That's interesting. That's mm -hmm. always going to be interesting. They often say, if you don't know what to do, create the content you would want to listen to. Well, I would find that interesting. I really hope you got something from this podcast. And if you're going through or have gone through a mental health issue and you found a way to make your life slightly easier and you want to share that story, please contact me. And I know it's a massive ask because no one's got any spare time, but I'm really trying to get this podcast out there. So if you have two minutes to leave me a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, that would be hugely appreciated. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care of yourself. My book, First Time Dad, A 42-Week Guide to Pregnancy, is available in Kindle and paperback form on Amazon and an audiobook form on Audible. To sign up for my monthly newsletter, please visit my website, www.dadmindmatters.com.